All right, I have 202. Scott, can you take down the music for us? Good to go. All right, great. Well, welcome everybody to our coffee break today. This is a newer initiative out of PitCon. Um, my name is Helen Boylan. My real job is that I'm a chemistry professor at a small liberal arts college, Westminster College in, in Western Pennsylvania. Um, but I am a part of the PitCon organizing committee and my role this year is I'm chair of the marketing committee. And one of the things that we're trying to do is really engage people um, and outside of conference week. So we've got different things that go on, many virtual events that are happening outside of conference week. And I'll talk about those at the end of this session. But we are very glad that you're here. And I do wanna tell you a little bit about PitCon if you're not familiar with it. So PitCon is a nonprofit organization whose mission is focused on science education. And as part of the proceeds from the Pittsburgh conference, we generate about a million dollars that gets put out into science education and outreach every year. So about more than 90 cents of every dollar that is raised as part of PitCon gets put out to science education, which is why I'm so passionate about this organization and why I volunteer um, to help organize this conference. Uh, and we're so glad for all of you who attend PitCon and, and help uh, support science education. But these coffee breaks are something that we're doing, just kind of a sort of a lighter, short uh, educational session. Um, and today, who we have with us is Dr. Scott Hansen. He is the director, the editorial director of Lab Manager Magazine, and he has over 30 years of experience working in industrial chemistry settings and business settings, where he sort of worked through, um, you know, the ranks up into a variety of leadership positions. And so, he brings to us a wealth of experience uh, in what he's going to be talking about today. So we're very glad to have Scott with us. Um, and he's going to give about 15 minutes of content and then open it up for Q&A. And that's, I think, where the really interesting part of this session is going to be. So with that, Scott, I'm handing it over to you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you for the invitation to participate and the kind introduction. I appreciate it. Today, I want to spend a few minutes on tips to improve lab leadership. And we'll include lab management in there too. These are passionate topics for me and I'm very happy to talk about them. I always wanna start talks with acknowledgements. My boss, Ken, pays me to do fun stuff like this and I appreciate that. And I've benefited from participating in a number of organizations that are listed on the screen and learned a bit about leadership and management in all of those different places. Scott, so, I'm not sure we're seeing the, the screen that you intend. Yeah, thanks, Ellen, okay. I'm getting ready. Let's uh, stop the share and try again. Okay, share screen. Hmm, interesting. My screen disappeared. Okay, I love computers. I don't know about you. Well, let me get the screen up again. Let's, let's try again to share it. Thanks for telling me. Okay, are we seeing my title slide now? Tips yes. to improve lab leadership? Yep. And if I advance the slide, it advances. Excellent. Okay. All right, so thank you to Ken for paying me and for these other organizations that have contributed to my leadership journey. I wanna start with one of my favorite quotes. It comes from Peter Drucker, who is a professor of leadership and management. He says, management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. And when we're talking about lab leadership or lab management, we know that there's a lot of things that have to be done right, like the science and the safety and the quality systems. But leadership is doing the right things. And a lot of that is how we interact with the people, how we interact with the scientists who are doing all of the work in the lab. So if you are into lab leadership and understand that it's a responsibility and accountability. And really what you're there to do is to help people do the science and to learn the science and to develop and to have the tools and the skills that they need in order to proceed with the technical work, then you're in the right place doing the right things. And if you think that, boy, if I can just get to the lab manager position or become the director of the organization, because then I have the power and I have the authority and I get to be unquestioned, well, then you're gonna be disappointed because that's not really what lab leadership or lab management is about. And while we've probably encountered some of the people on the right, 
we really value the people on the left. And what I want to talk about today is how you do those things on the left better and with more confidence. So what are the things that make a great leader? And there's been hundreds of books written on this topic, and you can find all kinds of opinions. So these are my opinions about what makes a great leader. Let's start with the fact that the leader cares, cares about the individuals as humans, cares about the mission, the science. And I think leaders who care make that evident in many different ways. And so one question to ask yourself is, I'm sure that you care about what's going on in your lab, but do the people around you understand that you care? Are you demonstrating that care? Another thing that makes a great leader is their ability to listen. And so they're absorbing information from the people around them. And a lot of the things that we do in labs may not be clear cut. I mean, that's why they call them experiments, right? So as we discuss the science, can we have healthy debate and can we as managers and leaders, can we really listen to what's going on? And then if we're gonna work in labs, we better be safe. And so another hallmark of leadership is promoting safety. And that's the easy and obvious stuff of protecting people's health and well-being when they're in the lab and making sure that we train students and new employees to operate in the lab safely. But it's more than that. It's also promoting emotional safety and psychological safety in the lab so that each person in the lab feels heard, feels valued, feels respected, and is able to contribute in the best way that they can. When we talk about great leadership, we don't often talk about vulnerability, but I list being vulnerable as part of being a great leader. Can you admit that you don't know? Can you admit that you need help? And so great leaders are people who can ask for help, ask for more ideas, who aren't the source of every idea for the laboratory. And not only do they do that, but they do it with comfort and they do it with confidence. And that leads us to being asked, able to ask for help. Nobody knows everything. And in many of our labs, there's a lot of complex science going on and you'll have subject matter experts or long-term experts in your lab who have a lot of experience. And part of being a leader is being willing and able to ask them for help within the confines of the lab but also to find your peers or to find line management or to find mentors outside of the organization and look for ways to learn. And part of that learning process is asking for help. Another thing that great leaders do is they establish a purpose for the mission of the laboratory. And is that purpose clear? Is it well communicated? If I were to walk into your lab and ask people what the purpose of the lab was, could they answer the question? And even better, could they answer the question in, I don't know, 20 seconds or less? Is that mission or that purpose crystallized? And do you have a, a key vision for your laboratory that you've established? Another element of great leadership is grit. And there's a book written recently that said that grit was the combination of passion and persistence. And so what I find to the people that I've looked up to as leaders is they bring both of those things. They bring a passion for the science and the work and the business. And so they're willing to uh, do things really well. They're willing to uh, expend their time and their energy and their work in order to make it the lab work. But they also have persistence because experiments don't work. Stakeholders get disappointed. Experiments run late. Uh, people leave. And we work through those difficulties. And so persistence is that stick to that enables hard problems and complex science to be accomplished. The eighth thing on my list is a willingness to give. We've probably all experienced takers in our lives, but great leaders are willing to give. They give of their time, their attention, their knowledge, their networks, their advice, and you Hopefully your leader, your manager has an open door policy and they're willing to you know, take their hand off the keyboard and spend a couple of minutes talking to you about what you need and be able to give you some advice or some time. Another piece of leadership is independence. Yes, we all have bosses, we all report to somebody, but do you have the wherewithal to think independently, to make independent decisions, to be accountable for the decisions and the actions that you have and to try to forge your path for your laboratory. 
one thing that all leaders have to do and all lab managers have to do is make decisions. It's part of what we are in the role to do. And so to be a great leader, you've got to make the decisions. Teddy Roosevelt said, the best thing you can do is make the right decision. The second best thing you could do is make the wrong decision. And the worst thing you could do is make no decision. And so we are tasked with making decisions and we have to, we have to make them for the lab to move forward, for the scientists to have direction, scientists to have approval to do what needs to be done next. Almost all of our decisions are reversible. So if we make wrong ones, we can be vulnerable, we can ask for help and we can make better ones. And we can keep things moving. Down there at the bottom, we have growth mindset and develop others. And both of those are about continuous learning and being interested in learning more. One is for ourselves with the growth mindset and the other one is how do we help others? And great leaders are gonna help others reach their potential. And so you know you're working for a great leader when they are asking you how they can help you grow and develop and you have a plan to do so. If you wanna learn more, you can look at the lab manager website, you can find this article and there's a bunch of text that describes each one of these top 12 things. Now, if you want to improve your lab leadership, what are ways you can do that? First and foremost, practice. You get out of your office, go out into the lab and be the leader that your staff needs you to be. And in order to practice, you have to be willing to make mistakes. And one of the things you have to do in order to learn is to make mistakes. So understand that some mistakes will be made, forgiveness will be given, life will go on, but as you practice these skills, you'll get better at them. On a similar vein, try some new approaches. We're all scientists here, right? We understand the value of experiments. As I started being a technical manager, some of my friends asked me, don't you miss being in the lab? Don't you miss doing experiments? My response was, I miss being in the lab, but I do experiments all the time. They're just a different kind of experiment. As we try to work with people, help them develop and get into the to a place where they can be more successful. You want to improve, ask for advice. That might be finding a mentor. It might be uh, talking to other successful leaders, but be willing to ask for help. Be willing to ask for advice and listen to the advice that you're given. Another thing you can do to improve is read. And whether that's reading leadership books, and I've got a whole shelf of them behind me, have uh, been very helpful to me. Or maybe it's reading a newsletter or reading a, a information that's available digitally online, or even just a tip of the day from the Harvard Business Review. There's lots of different things to, to read. Another thing we can all do is listen to our staff. And so you wanna get better at leadership, talk to your staff. They're the ones that you're leading. They have great insight into your style as a leader and your effectiveness as a leader. Or maybe you wanna take some training. Maybe you wanna to go to PitCon and take a short course or access training in some other way. But however you want to improve your lab leadership, it's going to involve some discomfort because learning and changing and uh, putting these things that you learn into practice will be a little bit uncomfortable, but that's where growth comes from. If you want to learn more, I'm going to give you several different opportunities to do that. One is at Lab Manager. We are in the process right now of developing our Lab Manager Academy. The first product out of our Lab Manager Academy will be a lab management certification. So if you wanna learn more, come to the Lab Manager website and we can give you a lot more information. Uh, also on the website, there's all sorts of articles and summits and webinars and other places where you can learn about lab leadership and lab management. Uh, those two topics are very important to us and we write content on them every month. One other thing that we do is we do virtual summits. So we do a summit every month on a wide range of topics, and it can give you the opportunity to learn about these different kinds of topics. I've been involved with the Association for Lab Managers or ALMA for a long time. I currently sit on the board. ALMA is a peer networking organization, so you get to learn from other lab managers. I found it to be very valuable and I recommend it to you. We are in the process right now of our annual conference, which means we're giving virtual presentations about two a month right now. And if you go to the ALMA website, you can learn more. And with that, I would love to take on some of your questions. So hopefully we can have some questions going into the chat. 
and we can see more uh, of what you want to know about today. All right, so we have the floor open for questions. Feel free to, to chat in your own questions about leadership, management. All right, Scott, since I'm not seeing anything, I'll, I'll kick off with the first question. So there seems to be a debate about whether you think sort of leadership is something that it, that's inherent that people are born with, or is it a skill that can be developed? What's your take on that? So I think that it's definitely a skill that can be developed. And I've got experience to prove it, right? I've worked hard to develop my skills. I've worked with some of the younger scientists in our labs and watched them develop their skills. I think people approach the topic from different starting points. And some people might need more coaching or more help than others, depending on what their life experience has brought them when they enter our laboratories. But I'm confident that anybody who has a true desire to learn leadership skills can do it. The question is whether they're willing to do the work to learn the skills and willing to go through the discomfort to practice them. All right, I've got a bunch of questions, but I'd love to hear questions from our attendees. All right, Scott, here's the next one. So as a good leader, how do you manage the competition between sort of the pressure from the bottom line versus sort of the care for your people? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. What's really interesting is that modern business scholarship has demonstrated that they are one and the same. That the better you treat your people and the more engaged your staff is, the more business success you will actually have. So it's really a fallacy to say that you have to choose between the pressures of the bottom line and your interest in the humans who work in the lab. That, that's sort of old fashioned thinking now that modern scholarship has demonstrated that the more you treat your people well, the more they grow, the more engaged they are. And the key thing here, if you wanna learn more, is called employee engagement, that the higher the employee engagement, that the key business metrics rise with employee engagement. And so now there's real data that says, if you want better business outcomes, then invest in your people. And I just wish that that message was, you know, spread more widely. All right. Yes, that's an important message. So we do have some questions in the chat. So this is from Kelsey. What should the career pathway for lab management look like? I run our entire GLP analytical testing lab, but my title is R&D scientist. Is that normal or am I being held back by my age? So is it normal? Let's call it common right? There are a lot of laboratories out there that only have one ladder. And so just as your responsibility goes up, you go up one ladder. And so you get a higher technical title. There are also plenty of people in my experience as a manager who, even though they were doing management jobs, they were reluctant to give up their technical titles for a whole variety of reasons. Are you being held back? That's about how you feel about your role and how you're being treated. I don't think it has a lot to do with your title, but if you feel like you're being supported, you're being given the opportunity to grow, you're being shown what the next promotion and opportunity might be for you, then I don't think you're being held back. If, however, you have a full slate of technical work and now you have to manage the entire GLP lab on top of it, maybe it's time for a conversation about fairness and equity. And I hope I answered your question. Yeah, and Kelsey, feel free to chat in if you have a follow up to that. So um, from Jessica, what are some tips for dealing with a dark history in your workplace, i.e. toxic workplace and moving everyone forward? So if you go take a training on dealing with difficult employees or dealing with difficult situations, the advice is always the same. It says, shine the bright light of day on the problem. A lot of toxic employees or toxic situations thrive in the dark. 
And by in the dark, I mean, we're not really paying attention to them. We haven't brought the spotlight of our attention to those particular issues. The more that you can reveal what those toxic behaviors are and what the impact of those toxic behaviors are on coworkers, the, the, a lot of those toxic things will go away. The people will just stop doing them because they're not willing to stand out in the light and behave that way. Now, the few sociopaths that are out there will behave that way no matter who's watching or what's saying. But as you discover those people, please exit them from the laboratory. You know, life is too short to deal with having those kinds of people in your laboratory. I think ultimately, if you have some authority, you start giving people choices. And the choices start to sound like, in this laboratory under my eye, we respect everybody and we work together to meet our, our common desires, our common outcomes. And you can choose to do that or you can choose to exit. And if you, don't cho if you choose no to both of those, then I will exit you and, and we'll solve the problem that way. But there's a level of assertiveness that's necessary in leadership to be able to stand up to the bullies, to stand up to some of the toxic employees and say, nope, we're not going to behave that way. And it might have been allowed previously, but I'm, I wasn't in charge previously, and we're not going to behave that way anymore. And to set your stamp on how, the culture of this laboratory and how it's going to proceed into the future. All right, Scott, what advice do you have if you aren't in a formal leadership role and maybe the leaders that are there aren't necessarily demonstrating good leadership behavior? What's interesting about Drucker's quote is leadership is about doing the right things. He says nothing about having a title or having authority or having a corner office. He doesn't say any of that. He says leadership is doing the right things. My belief is that anyone and everyone can be a leader. It's about doing the right things. Now, it is certainly more convenient. It is more helpful if the people above you are putting, are doing the right things themselves, right? But if they're not, you can at least do the right things from your perspective. I've been in situations where that has occurred. And what I've seen is that the people who step up and do the right things they gather support and respect of their coworkers. And they can, in fact, counter the actions or maybe the inactions of management above them just by consistently doing the right things. So great, Scott, thank you. Can you give some advice for people who might be thinking about maybe transitioning from their current job into another industry to take on a leadership position and what sort of advice you would give? So for people who are transitioning, it's frankly easier to transition outside of your organization. It's actually harder to get promoted from being one of the peers at the lab bench to being the manager or director because you have to change all of your relationships. If you go to another organization, now you get to start fresh relationships in your role as a leader. I think the key thing is to know why you're doing it. And so, you know, as I showed on the previous slide where we talked about what a leader is and what a leader isn't, if you're going into that position in order to share your expertise, to help others, to make a difference, if you're willing to serve your staff and to do it with some humility, you're doing it for all the right reasons. And I applaud you and, and wish you the best of success. If, however, you're doing it because you really want power and you want authority and you want to be able to tell people what to do, that becomes a slippery slope. The more you rest on power and authority, the uh, more that you, your decisions can be challenged. I, even though I have power and authority, I tend to lead through influence. It's more my style, it's more comfortable, it's more collaborative for me. And so I think the, the best advice I can give you is to know why you're making the change and to look yourself right in the mirror and, and understand why you wanna do this. And understand also that leadership is hard and it comes with responsibility and accountability. And as long as you're willing to help others, they'll help you. So Scott, I'm not seeing any more questions. I'm just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the Lab Manager Academy and the certificate program, what's involved there and what the cost might be, that sort of thing. 
So we are super excited about this. This is a passion project for me. So I'm going to be the lead instructor in this. I've we worked in the labs for 30 years. I was a lab manager for 20 years. And I'm basically trying to share my experience as a lab manager. We are in the process of creating 20 different e-learning courses. So they're all online. Take them when you want to. Move through them at the pace that you want to move through them. Each course will come with a course certificate. They'll come in tracks of five courses that are on related topics like performance management or lab operations. You can get a certi certificate for that tract, or you can take all 20 courses and get a certificate from us as a lab manager certification. These 20 courses span the range of responsibilities and knowledge that lab managers are expected to have from people leadership, performance management, lab management, and lab operations. Uh, each course is about an hour long. Each course comes with some lecture, some descriptive slides, some interactive elements and some homework assignments, some activities. And I, I really hope that this, the learners take advantage of those activities because they'll ask you questions about the situations in your lab. And if you really think through what you're trying to accomplish in your lab and complete the activities, it'll reinforce the learning elements that are in the courses. We are hoping to get the first track to five courses done by the middle of November and then put out another five as quickly as we can. From a cost perspective, we haven't finalized costs yet, but our initial idea is it'll be about $99 for a course, $449 for a tract of five courses, and $1,599 for all 20 classes. And so we're pretty excited about getting it out there. We feel like it fills a niche in the marketplace that you know, for me as a lab manager, it was very hard to find training for lab management. So we're hoping that it's useful to you guys out there and that lab managers will benefit. Okay, great. Sounds like a really great opportunity. All right, last call for questions. All right, so I'm not seeing anything come in. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and sh share my screen here. All right. So one thing I just want to talk about are some of the events that are coming up. So uh, PitCon is offering a series of online short courses. Our next online short course is Tuesday, November 2nd. There is a fee associated with the short course, but if you're interested in learning, uh, scanning electron microscopy, uh, or you have some colleagues or people who work for you, please encourage them to participate. We are offering a series of free online learning labs. Our next one is Thursday, November 11th. This is talking about selecting a limb system. And we don't have the date finalized, but our next coffee break is gonna be talking about recruiting or finding employment in during this pandemic. Um, so we have a recruiter that's gonna be leading that session. So um, you know, watch our social media for details on that. And of course, would love to have you attend our face-to-face -face conference. We will be in Atlanta, March 5th through the 9th. And so whether you're a lab manager or you work for a chemical industry, lots of opportunities there for you to build soft skills, technical skills, talk to the technical experts on our expo floor, participate in short courses, and even participate in a networking session. So I've just learned that Scott's willing to come to PitCon in person. He's gonna lead a uh, sort of a roundtable discussion about uh, leadership. So that would be an opportunity to get some, some additional uh, education and training on this. So with that, Scott, I'll leave it for you for uh, any closing thoughts. Thank you, Helen, for the opportunity to present. As Helen mentioned, I'm excited about doing a networking event live at PitCon. It'll be great to be face to face with all of you again. And I hope that uh, you'll come and spend uh, some time with us talking about lab leadership and lab management. Awesome. Thanks to all of you who took time out of your busy day to join us and uh, hope to see you in Atlanta in March. See you all later. Thank you.